Put in the wing tube sockets in, it isn't hard at all. It's just something we need to take care and make sure that we get everything lined up straight. Uh, and essentially what we're gonna do is use some uh, epoxy. Um, I use West Systems epoxy. I, I just, I like using that. I don't, I don't know that it's any better than uh, many of the other brands. Uh, it's just what I happen to have used for several years and I'm comfortable with it. Uh, so we'll use that epoxy to uh, glue these in. Uh, we'll use some uh, micro balloons to, to help uh, fill some volume and, and eliminate some of the weight of the epoxy. Uh, you can see we've got our false rib in here. Uh, our uh, wing tube socket slides in nicely. It goes past the false rib. And that's what I wanted to make sure there is that it did go past that false rib easily. We don't want to get epoxy smeared in there and then find out that we have a problem with that getting bound up. So uh, what we want to do First is uh, make sure that we get this uh, wing core uh, properly secured back into its hull or into its husk, uh, like this one here. I, as a matter of fact, I'll put a couple more pieces of tape on here. And we want to make sure that this is lined up uh, on either side uh, nice and squarely in there because when we join these two things, these two halves together with a wing tube, we'll be looking down from either side and looking here to make sure that it's uh, one perfectly flat on uh, this nice little roll around flat top that I've got. Uh, I could use a table saw, it's certainly flat, uh, and I have done that many, many times, but I'll need the table saw here just a little bit while these are sitting overnight. I'll probably do two or three of them and just let them sit overnight to make sure that uh, that wing tube is set in there pretty good. So uh, I will go ahead and take this one up and be back with you. Okay, now we'll check to see just how straight our wing tube sockets are. Oh, that looks very nice. And we'll take a look down. It's nice and straight, very straight. No, uh, no curves, so it's, it's nice and straight. We don't have a, a V shape in it. And You want to sight all the way down to make sure that you don't have any dihedral built in or any anhedral. Uh, you want to make sure that we're flat all the way across, uh, unless you've intentionally built that in there. And of course, this plane we have not. Uh, and it pulls up nice and tight. I'll gather some more sandbags. Uh, probably put two on each one. Uh, and again, it's very important to make sure that you're on a flat surface. If your table happens to have a, uh, a dip in it or a little bit of a rise that maybe you don't even notice or don't know that it's there, uh, you will build that into the wing uh, and it may or may not influence the, the flight characteristics of the plane. Uh, this table here I know is super flat. I check it periodically uh, with a straight edge so it is the, the flattest, aside from one of the, the big machines, it is uh, the flattest surface in here. Uh, it's just a uh, couple pieces of MDF on top of a, a rolling table. I like tables that roll around and, and push them out of the way in a small shop. Uh, and I've actually had to put some shims under the middle of this one and then screw it down to get it perfectly flat. Uh, it was flat when I started and after about two months I noticed that uh, probably due to humidity or whatever else it happened to be, uh, it wasn't quite flat over the entire 48 inches. Uh, so I had to put some shims under the middle and uh, screw the ends down. Uh, it is nice and flat now, so that set of uh, wing cores looks perfect. Now this wing set, I uh, only taped in the bottom part of the, uh, the husk. You can see that the, our original directional up lines uh, still match up, so this is the correct bottom for this one. And uh, I can see it through the tape there. That is uh, the right orientation for that one as well. Uh, I've always uh, taped them in the, the top and the bottom uh, for clarity's sake so that, that we can see on the video. Uh, I did it 
uh, this time, just taping them to the bottom. Um, it may even be a better way to do it than, than concealing the top inside that top husk. We'll see. I don't think there's any real reason to have it, to have the top on here. It doesn't support anything. Oh, and that does look nice. It's nice being able to have a better view of what's going on there. So that lines up perfectly there. I don't know if you can see. We've got a nice tight seam going here. It's nice and flat across the front so the two are not shifted backward or forward. There's not one shifted higher than the other. Um, and that's where using that center line referenced off the bottom that we, um, that we did in the beginning of this process comes in uh, to be very, very important. Uh, if you use a thick Sharpie, uh, a regular Sharpie, when you're marking that center line, of course that line is, is what, an eighth of an inch or, or three sixteenths of an inch, and you could move that template up and down um, while you're centering and still, you still get it centered on that line. In other words, your margin of error would be, you know, up to uh, an eighth inch or, or three sixteenths of an inch. If you use the extra fine Sharpie, that line is a lot sharper and uh, you will place that template uh, exactly where it needs to be every time. So to glue these tubes in, uh, we're just going to use some um, epoxy, West Systems epoxy. I happen to use the uh, 105 resin, the standard resin, and the 205 uh, hardener. They call it um, fast hardener, uh, but I have found that it, it's not fast in the, the typical fashion that we're used to uh, dealing with, which would be five minute. You generally get about uh, uh, 20 to 30 minutes of uh, working time with this hardener uh, in, in this temperature this shop stays around 65 72 degrees so uh, at that temperature I, I find that I've got plenty of time I'm not at all rushed if I use the uh, regular hardener it, it can take an hour or so before uh, it starts to really tack up and, and get firm so uh, I don't find that the 205 is is fast at all uh, particularly after being used to five minute epoxy uh, which indeed is too fast for a lot of the things we do and, and just perfect for uh, a lot of things that we do. So uh, let's mix some up. And of course this mixture is five to one, uh, but the, the spouts that you get with the, the system uh, do the measuring for you. And we'll use the uh, Dust collector to keep from breathing these micro balloons in. And I mix them about half and half. If we were uh, depending on anything structural, with this epoxy, we wouldn't use near this much uh, micro balloon. But since we're dealing with foam and we only need to be a little bit stronger than the foam, uh, it's a perfect application here. And once the, the epoxy has wet all of the uh, wetted all of the uh, micro balloons, you don't need the vacuum. You just don't want to breathe the dust in that comes off when you first start stirring that. And that's very light. So we've increased our volume by at least 100%. I put a little bit more than than uh, one to one in there. I put a little more micro balloons than I did epoxy. Uh, so that heavy epoxy now is is uh, a lot lighter per volume. So I generally just use my finger and smear it on there. And whenever you're dealing with epoxy, you always need paper towels and alcohol to clean up because this stuff always gets everywhere. You don't need wasting a whole paper towel small cleanup.
I make sure that I get a pretty good bit right here where the false rib is going to be. That's uh, about about there. So about an inch from the end. Just make sure that that's wet real good. And the rest of it doesn't have to be very thick at all. Just get it smeared on there pretty good. And then I put a pretty good bit out here towards the end, which would be the root end. Just slide it in. And I leave about a half inch sticking out so that I, am, I, I don't worry about getting epoxy inside the tube. Uh, if you get epoxy inside the tube, then uh, you're going to have difficulties cleaning it out to get your wing tube to slide in. So uh, that's about all that we need there. After uh, after the after it is set, we put them together and it is set overnight. Uh, I'll pull these back a court back apart, and if there's any gaps, uh, which on this side there are, if there are any gaps, I'll uh, mix a lot of micro balloons and a little bit of epoxy, and I will pour it down in those gaps just to uh, keep that wing tube from wanting to rock back and forth. Uh, and in this one, there is a little bit of a gap up here because we walled it out a whole lot. Uh, so that's what we'll do when we're all done. But we'll wait until we're finished so that as it's sitting, whatever wants to ooze out will not. Uh, so uh, when we pour it down in there, we'll let it sit up like that. And I'll probably even use five minute epoxy for that. So I'll move that one off to the side. real good. So we want to make sure that the mating surfaces on these two uh, wing cores is clean. We don't have any epoxy dripping down. We don't have any epoxy inside the wing tubes or the wing tube sockets themselves. So just clean that out just to make sure, because the last thing we want to do is glue the aluminum wing tube in. Make sure that it's, uh, that you wipe it real good around the bottom. If any has dripped down, get that up. Check both sides to make sure that, uh, both wing halves, to make sure that you don't have epoxy inside that socket. I'll just stick my finger in there and just double check. And then gently slide the wing tube in this side. Of course, the socket is down flush with the uh, root of the wing core there. And I did not push it back it's, it's in there firmly so it's probably not going to move but you just want to double check to make sure that you don't push it further into the wing now it's got epoxy on it it'll slide pretty easy get your two wing halves together again making sure that your uh, socket doesn't slide back into the wing and both of those are good uh, get it lined up nicely that looks really nice right there Four pieces of tape 
Now, as you can tell, I go through a lot of tape and tape these two halves together so that they can't spread back apart. Now that everything is lined up nicely, that looks really nice. Straight across the back or straight across the front. And get it in a position where it's going to stay and dry because once we get it set with weights, we don't want to be moving it. And these are uh, uh, not sandbags, I use a, a aquarium gravel in uh you know you buy it at walmart or wherever you want to buy it. it's pretty cheap uh, and it's nice and handy if i use sand i find that uh if you get the tiniest little hole in one of your seams here the sand wants to get all over the place the aquarium gravel stays in there better and it uh, seems to be heavier so uh, it works out really well and i like that length make them long enough that uh, you can bend them over because uh, uh, when i'm moving uh, my planes around inside my trailer uh, I like to set them over the wheels uh, and they hold the, the plane still. So uh, trial and error making these things, I found they give yourself enough slack that uh, they will fold over like that and they're a little easier to deal with. Uh, and that's just, uh, I think they call that duck claw. And I've got some that are blue, some that are black. I'm fortunate enough that my son-in-law makes those for me. He runs a sewing machine better than I do. So I'm sliding down from one end to the other, making sure that that wing is perfectly flat. And it does look good. That looks very nice. So uh, we'll glue the other one together and let them sit overnight. Push the table out of the way and let them sit. Okay, I've got a. Uh, both of these sets of wings uh, glued together, the wing socket tubes are glued together, and um, I liked uh, doing this one so much with uh, the top husk off. Uh, it allowed me to see better and, and do a little better adjustments. I uh, don't know why I didn't think about that earlier. Uh, I even went back and took the top husk off of the, the first set that we did uh, before I uh, glued them together or set them together, and uh, we'll put some weight on them and make absolutely sure that they are straight down the front and that they are, are not cupped or, or bowed. And uh, they're not, they're perfectly flat all the way across and they're perfectly straight all the way across. So we'll just push this card off to the side and let these sit overnight. Well, that wraps up episode number five. That's the last step in the process, um, preparing the wing cores for sheeting. And obviously we'll do that in episode number six. So um, make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't. And if you get an opportunity to share the video to somebody else, uh, that would certainly help us out in the, the rankings. So I will see you in the next episode. Uh, that's episode number six.